Hello and welcome to another episode of the Leo Alves podcast and in today's podcast episode I am going to speak all about creatine. Now I have done podcast episodes on supplements before but I've never done one solely dedicated to creatine and I'm speaking creatine monohydrate. Now the reason why I decided to make this podcast episode is because I recently recorded a YouTube video on the subject and it got such good feedback that I decided you know what why don't I just make a podcast episode about this as well. So here we are saying that before I move on I will say if you want or you would rather watch me speak about creatine so via YouTube video then I'll link the YouTube video as a link in the show notes of this podcast episode to, so you can just click on that and check that out but otherwise let's get stuck straight in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to speak about what creatine does first of all because I feel like it's such a common question what does creatine do Everyone is speaking about it. It's one of the most popular uh, supplements out there, hence why I'm making this podcast episode about it as well. But yeah, it's almost like no one can really tell me exactly what it does. So I'm going to tell you exactly what it does in the most simplest of terms, and then I'm going to follow it up with just a straightforward Q&A. So just the most frequently asked questions I get about creatine monohydrate. So what does creatine do? And I'm going to, again, put this simply because I feel like I used to explain it quite simply, but I used to use the like overcomplicated terms. And I feel like when I would do that, I would lose people. So I'm going to try and explain this as straightforward as possible. So everyone, me and you included, has free energy systems. And we're going to informally call these energy systems your quick energy system, the medium energy system, and the long energy system. So that quick energy system basically lasts for about 10 seconds and it's a very intense burst of energy. So you would use this while you're doing like a set of deadlifts or a 100 meter sprint. And then you've got the medium energy system, which is primarily utilized within like 400 meter races or football matches. And this isn't as intense as the quick energy system because again, this goes on for longer. It goes on for about 15 to 20 seconds to about two minutes and then you've got the final energy system which can last for hours now it's the least intense so a person who would primarily be using this energy system for their sport is like Mo Farah who is a long distance runner now what creatine monohydrate does and I hope you haven't lost me here is it slightly improves that quick energy system so the first one i mentioned which is the energy system that primarily gets used when you're doing a set of whichever weightlifting exercise or or strength training exercise it might be whether it's deadlifts or squats or again that 100 meter sprint and what it does is it increases this again energy system that typically lasts for about 9 10 11 seconds by an extra one second let's say one or two seconds and now you might be thinking one or a one or two second improvement is that it is that what all this fuss is about but now you have to like hold up and think about it because that extra second let's say that can make the that can make a massive difference over the long term within a 100 meter race that can sometimes be the difference between finishing first and second or within a set of deadlifts let's say again that could be an extra rep at the end of your set and now think of that extra rep adding up across every single workout for every single week by every single month by every single year by the end of it you would have done so many extra reps due to the help from the creatine that it's helped dramatically with improvements so that's what creatine monohydrate does supplementing with it and i hope that (laughs) made sense anyway let's go on to common q and a's so number one is creatine safe? And this is going to be in no particular order, by the way. So the first question is, is creatine monohydrate safe to supplement with? And yes, creatine monohydrate is absolutely safe to be supplementing with. In fact, it is one of the most extensively researched supplements out there. So you have nothing to worry about when you're supplementing with it. Again, it's been tested time and time and time and time again. If anything was wrong with it by now, we would, if anything was wrong with it, we would have picked up on it a long time ago. So again, there's absolutely nothing to lose from taking it and a whole bunch of positives instead. Question number two, should you opt for the powdered version or the pill version of creatine? Now, in my opinion, it doesn't matter too much, but in my opinion, I would opt for the powdered version instead if you have the choice because the powdered version is more easily absorbed by the body. Simple as that. Question number three, 
should you do a loading phase when taking creatine? And the re- what I mean by this is that sometimes when people are discussing cre- uh, supplementing with creatine monohydrate, typically people will speak about the fact that you need to do a loading phase when starting with it, which is when you maybe up your dose of creatine. So let's say you're taking five grams a day and maybe within, let's say, the first two or three weeks, you might take 20 grams a day instead. Just so you have that heightened level of creatine within your body more rapidly. I don't feel like this is necessary. I've heard arguments for both sides and my conclusion is, you know what? I find it a bit much to supplement with that much creatine at once every day for however many weeks. So I just say, you know what? When you get back on it, five grams a day every day is absolutely fine. Yeah, it might take a a little while longer for your body to have heightened levels of creatine monohydrate, but it's fine. I, I just prefer doing that. Again, there's no wrong or right answer, but I just that's just my preference to get on it with just five grams a day every day and not do the loading phase. Now, the next question is best practices for creatine. So by that, I mean like timing and how much should you take? So when it comes to timing, I, you, you know what? I, I've heard of there being an optimal time to take it, but I feel like but I've also I also know for a fact that ma- this makes like a probably like a zero point zero one percent difference for your everyday person, like me and you here, who you know we obviously I'm very passionate about my health and fitness, hence why I do this for a living. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't be doing this much. But for your everyday person who wants to get stronger, lose some weight, you know you're you're not a professional athlete. I, I would say it doesn't matter what time you take creatine monohydrate. The one thing I would say is just take creatine monohydrate when you can be most consistent with taking it because it's no use hearing, okay, it's during or it's post-workout. That's the most optimal time for taking creatine. But then what happens is you're always trying to take it post-workout, but you often forget as well. So now your consistency with taking creatine monohydrate is like 50%, which is useless because you have to be really consistent with taking creatine for it to actually work. So what I will say is just take creatine monohydrate whenever you can remember. And that's what I do. I'll typically take creatine monohydrate during my workouts because that's just when I remember to to take it. I have like formed a habit of getting ready for the gym and then putting my creatine monohydrate in my water bottle. And that's just a habit that consistently happens. Sometimes I might just take it at another time on one specific day for whatever reason, but that's typically what I'll do as well. So what I have to say, so that's basically a long-winded way of saying, just take creatine monohydrate whenever you can be most consistent with it, because that's what's most important, rather than worrying about optimal timings, that's going to make like a 0.01% difference. Now, with that said, how much should you be taking daily? And I, I'm just going to say five grams a day every single day, that's typically what people recommend. There's been other suggestions for slightly higher or slightly lower, but five grams a day every day is just a a very easy one to remember and be consistent with. Now, the next common question I get is who should consider supplementing with creatine? Now, first of all, I'm going to start off by saying that the people that should consider supplementing with creatine monohydrate is absolutely everyone who wants to improve their strength and performance in the gym, which if you're listening to this podcast episode, especially this far in, chances are it's you. And now saying that as well, I've heard of, uh, at the time of recording this podcast, there's a lot of research coming out that shows cognitive benefits or improvements with taking creatine monohydrate too. So it could go way beyond just supplementing with it for muscle and strength. Now, I also want to say to this is that the people that I would recommend taking creatine monohydrate the most is likely vegans and vegetarians. And the reason why is because creatine monohydrate or creatine is generally found in like meats and seafood. Whereas of course, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you're cutting out a lot of those sources and therefore chances are you're going to be lacking in your creatine. So if you're a vegan or vegetarian or you have a friend who is vegan or vegetarian, then I would suggest that they supplement with creatine monohydrate more than anyone. And you know what? On that note, I feel like this is a really good time to mention my free protein guide. I informally call it the protein cheat sheet. I think I've actually named it protein power 
but now I like the name protein cheat sheet more nowadays, so that's what I call it. But anyway, I've got a free protein cheat sheet over on my website, which you can grab for free as well. So regardless of whether you're vegan, vegetarian, you're a meat eater, or you have other dietary guidelines, this free guide, which I'll link also in the show notes of this podcast episode, has like over 200 proteins, maybe not that many, about maybe between maybe 100 and 150, if I was, I could be way off. But Look, this is what I'll say. It's got a lot of protein sources ranked from most to least efficient. And if you're struggling with your protein intake right now, then I would recommend just grabbing that guide for free. And again, you can find it via the link in the show notes of this podcast episode. I've gone on a whole tangent here. So let me get back to what I was speaking about, which is about creatine. Now, the next question is, actually, this is not a question because I'm coming to uh, an end now. But I do want to bring up one point that gets mentioned time and time and time again when it comes to supplementing with creatine monohydrate. And these are managing scale weight fluctuation, uh, the scale weight fluctuations, I should say, that comes with supplementing with creatine. So if you don't know what I'm speaking about, typically what happens when you supplement with creatine monohydrate, especially around when you're first starting with it, your scale weight can fluctuate a ton. This is due to the water retention that's going on. Now, This is very normal. It happens to humans, which you are. And I like, this is just something you don't need to worry about. If you see your scale scale weight uh, wildly fluctuating, maybe it's spiked by one kg all of a sudden. Don't panic. Don't worry. Chances are you've been very consistent as well. Like the creatine monohydrate isn't making you regress in any way. It's just water weight fluctuations that you're seeing on the scale. And you shouldn't worry about this. Now, the old me actually, before I say this, now, if you're not supplementing with creatine monohydrate because you're worried about those scale weight fluctuations, then I would just say don't weigh yourself because why are you missing out on so many potential benefits just because of something that you don't even need to worry about? I know psychologically it's tough to see those scale weight fluctuations. And again, I'm, I'm just speaking to you here right now if this is something that's stressing you out. If you're getting stress over these scale weight fluctuations, so therefore you're not taking creatine monohydrate, then I would rather you take the creatine monohydrate and not weigh yourself for a while because you're missing out on so many benefits. The old me would have said, okay, you know what? Just don't worry about the creatine monohydrate. But nowadays I just feel like, no, why miss out on these benefits? Take the creatine monohydrate if you can, if you've got the budget for it. And on that note, creatine monohydrate is like one of the cheapest supplements. It used to be cheaper before 2020 and then during you know the pandemic and all the lockdowns happening worldwide it does seem like supplements have definitely increased in price but creatine is still one of the more cheaper ones especially if you know where to look and um yeah just don't miss out on these benefits take a break from weighing yourself if, if necessary and otherwise i would just leave that question at that because I don't feel like I need to um, say anything else. Oh yeah, and actually one more thing that I want to mention about creatine that I almost forgot is that it's only going to make a minor difference to your fitness progress. You must place importance or an emphasis, I should say, on the big rocks first. And by that, I mean your nutrition, your sleep, whether you're training well, whether you're applying a progressive overload, whether you're consuming enough protein, whether you're drinking enough water, you know, these are your big important rocks that you want to be thinking about first. Because, you know, if half of these are things that you're not even thinking twice about, and maybe you're actually doing them, for lack of a better word, quite poorly, then again, creatine isn't really going to help you that much here. You want to focus on those things first. And then once you're in a really good place with, you know, all those things that I mentioned, then you can start thinking about being consistent with creatine monohydrate. But otherwise, that's about it for this podcast episode. So it was nice and straightforward. Uh, So to summarize, creatine monohydrate improves that quick, intense energy system that you typically use when lifting weights. Creatine is absolutely safe. I would recommend the powdered version don't worry about doing a loaded phase. I will just get to, or I'll just start off with taking five grams every day from when you start taking it. You have to be very consistent with taking it as well. You don't just take it on workout days, which is actually another common myth I've heard or a common mistake I see. You take it every single day. Timing doesn't matter. Just be consistent with it. Five grams a day every day. Uh, Who should consider it? I think absolutely everyone, but even more so if you're vegan or vegetarian. And now with these cognitive benefits coming out, it could make sense for elderly people to think about or consider it even more so. 
And then um, scale weight fluctuations when taking creatine monohydrate, absolutely normal. Do not worry about it. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. If you know someone who is wondering about what creatine monohydrate does, then do share this episode with them. This could be very valuable for them to hear. This is like the ultimate guide and the only thing you really need to hear when it comes to cre- uh, creatine monohydrate and then you're set for life on the subject. And then uh, and uh, with that, do subscribe to which uh, to the podcast on whichever platform you do listen to this on because it helps the podcast grow immensely and makes and helps me put out more podcast episodes like this uh, do leave it a review as well five stars if you may and uh, otherwise take care have a lovely day and i'll see you around that wraps it up for another episode of the Leo Alves podcast. I do hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. If you did, then please do consider sharing it with your friends, family, group chat, or even anyone else who you know could be interested in listening to that episode. Otherwise, if you haven't already, then please do leave a five-star review on whichever platform you are listening to this on. And remember, all the relevant links, such as the inquiry form to potentially become a Keros Online member, my social media handles, a free fat loss guide, and a free workout plan are all also found in the show notes of this podcast episode as well. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you around.